church, and we thank you for your generous offering, and sure it will be used for that building of God's kingdom. Before Brother Tom comes and brings the message, I want to read a little, uh, a couple verses or two or three here in uh, the uh, Second Timothy, starting in the fourth chapter, about three or four verses, something like that, before he comes and brings the message. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that you hear every day, it goes on all the time, and here Paul was uh, writing to Timothy here, and, and it still applies to us today. And I think if more people listen to God's Word and, and uh, rely upon it, I think we'll be in a whole lot better shape. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the Word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they reap heap unto themselves teachers having itching, itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. This was happening years and years and years and years ago when the church was first being established. This is Paul writing to Timothy here. It applies to us today. People are wanting to hear what will make their ears sound good and what will make them feel good. But if it's not the truth, don't pay attention to it. But if it's out of God's Word, make sure you listen to it. Because that is about the best sound advice that you can get. Listen to God's Word as they are being spoken as Brother Tom comes and brings a message. people here believe today that God is alive? Oh, I see those hands go up. You know, it's odd. We, we, we sang here a minute ago about I'll be listening. And we sang this morning about he whispers to me and no songs were picked out for a reason. But I hadn't got with Brother Joe and here he talks about itchy ears and people hearing fables and hearing things other than the Word of God. And it's funny how the Lord puts these things together. And, and that's the only one I can give the credit to. Because that's some of what we're going to talk about today. Now, can the, are the microphones turned up? Can everybody hear me? Okay, so we're not got any excuses there. I want you to turn with me today in the Gospel of Matthew in the 13th chapter. And we're going to talk today about hearing. And we're going to talk about seeing. Maybe we'll figure out some things. I've got some technical terms. I noticed Doc's here. Maybe he'll overlook if I mispronounce them. That's the reason I never did go to school to be a doctor. I couldn't say those big words. But we're going to talk in, uh, about that and about the Lord today um, and maybe why we have some of the problems that we have in life today. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, I want you to follow with me. Sometimes I get excited when I get up here and I say things and ramble on faster than I mean to. And uh, then you can correct me after the uh, message is over. Starting with the first verse, in chapter 13, it says, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sang, sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. There was a day, long ago seems to be, that people wanted to hear Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And that doesn't happen too often today, as you can tell by the way that churches are not filled and uh, the way that people believe today. Verse 3 says, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. 
Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Parables are easily understood stories. It's a similitude or a comparison of something that we can relate to. And Jesus taught in this way because it was interesting to the young and it was instruction to those that were older. The Bible lists 30 different parables, seven of which are in Matthew 13. He goes on, and he answered and said unto him, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Jesus spoke at different levels to different people. Just as today, when we conduct business, we may speak in one manner, but yet when we're speaking at home to our spouse or our loved ones, we may speak at a different level so that they can comprehend. And that was important to Jesus, that whoever he spoke to, that they understood him, that they heard him and knew what he was saying. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6 says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so thou, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up the voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, thou shalt, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. How much do we want to search for the word? Do we really want to hear the word? Do we get in it and dig deeper and deeper into something we don't understand? Do we just back away and say, well, I don't understand that part. It must not be for me to know. Or do we search for that word like it was a hidden treasure? That's something that we really need to know. John said in chapter 3, 27, man can receive nothing except it give, be given to him from heaven. If we want to know, that's where we need to go for the source, is to ask God and to search into his scripture. In verse 12 he says, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. If you have it, use it. And if you don't, you're going to lose it. That's what he's saying here. God starts us out with enough grace and enough knowledge to become a Christian. And from there on, we need to grow and we need to do the things. Just as we had the parable of the talents mentioned, if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. So we have to use it. In uh, verse 13, it says, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. So why do we not hear something? I called uh, Meg, and I'm not sure what Meg's title is, this, but she works in hearing, and I thought, you know, I want you to tell me what is the number one reason that we can't hear. What is it about us that makes us that we can't hear something? So she explained to me presbyocusis. And that is where we have hair cells in the inside of our ears. And over time, those hair cells wear down and they don't conduct as well, and thus we can't hear. So now, wives, when you tell your husband something, you understand why he doesn't hear you the first time is because maybe he has this condition and uh, maybe that's why they don't hear. Maybe that's why we don't hear the Lord. Maybe we have a problem with our hearing and we can't hear the word as it's spoken to us. These hair cells, as she calls them, are not regenerative in humans. So once you lose them, that's it. So then I got to wonder, well, wonder why we don't see. So I called my brother. And here he comes off with about the same word. It's called presbya opia. And he says that over time, the lens in our eyes get hard. And we've got these muscles in there that are pulling on your eyes all the time while you're looking around and focusing. And when it pulls on that eye, it makes it focus. But as that lens in your eye gets harder and harder as time goes on, the muscles can't pull it. 
The muscles can't get it focused just the right way. Something has to be fixed. So there is the reason why most people can't see. Sometimes cataracts, which over the lens, will blur it and make it cloudy, and we can't see through that. But is that the reason that we can't see the need for God in our lives? Is because that muscle can't torque our lens and our eyes? Is that why we don't see the need for God in our lives? Sometimes we have selective hearing. We focus on those things that interest us, those things that we think we have need of. And if it doesn't pertain to us that day, we just don't pay attention to it. We don't see it. We don't hear it. There's a great little button on TVs. It's a mute button. And I know everybody in here knows. That commercial comes on, and you've seen it a hundred times. ka -ching. We hit that little button, don't we? And we wait till that goes away. But do we mute God, too? When I'm standing here today, I've worked on this message for some time, and I want everyone to see, and I want everyone to hear this word today, and how important it is that you have Jesus Christ. Is there a time in this sermon when you go, well, I'm just going to mute him, I'll wait closer to the end, I'll catch, him. We'll, we'll catch up what's going on. Do we really pay attention in our life, or do we mute out things that are very important to us, such as the Scripture? We need not to mute God out, and a lot of times people do this because of illnesses. Sometimes we do it because Satan puts doubt in our life. He tells us to procrastinate, or we feel depressed. We don't feel like we're important enough that God cares for us. So we'll just we'll tend to that another day, and we put it off, and it never happens. Sometimes the sound doesn't hear doesn't penetrate into our mind, into our heart, or into our eyes. If you think about your heart, how does your heart get what sensors it does? We perceive things through our mind, through our sight, or we hear things and we take them in and our brain processes all this and it sends it to our heart. But our hearts aren't open. They could be open, but they're blocked because we don't want to see and we don't want to hear what God has for us. We sit and think, well, you know, I'm not a bad person. I go to church every Sunday. And I sing. And when a collection plate comes around, I put money in. But are you following God? Are you doing the things that God asks you to do when he whispers to us to do these little things through the Scripture? Are we really following him? Or do we push him away? In verse 14 it says, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And shall you, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. Here Jesus is recalling from the scriptures of Isaiah, telling them what's going to happen. And in 14 it says, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, we close our eyes. Lest at any time they shall see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and, I sh and should be converted, and I should heal them. In Isaiah 6 and 10, it says, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their hearts, and understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed. Do you think it's possible that after a while, God gets tired of sowing seed in your life, and he says, I'll make it to where you can't hear. I'll make it to you don't want to hear. I'll make it to you don't see the danger that you're getting ready to come into. That you're just living happily here, and that you're headed for hell and destruction, but I'll make it to where you can't see that because you've avoided me so many times. Is that possible? In Psalms 119 and 70, said, Their heart is as fat as grease. Pleasures override sometimes what we want to hear. You know, there's a scripture that says, Preach easy things, preach nice things to me. But at the same time, those preachers have to be accountable for what they preach. And you can't let those pleasures override. 
Sometimes we're lazy about our hearing. We don't want to work on something right now. We don't want to do it right now. We want to procrastinate. And a lot of the reason why we don't hear and see sometimes, or sinners don't hear or see, is because they don't have a broken heart and they don't have a contrite spirit. They don't see a need for God. Everything's going great. I don't have any problems. I don't need God. So therefore, we push him away, and we don't see a need, and we don't hear a need for him. In Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. <coughs> but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear <coughs> We are happy sometimes to live in sin. We're happy to have iniquity. And because we have that, we don't want to face God because God doesn't like sin. So we're just going to stay in this little realm where we are, living in sin, not doing the things that God has us to do, and God will hide his face from us. And it's because of the iniquities that we have in our life. We don't want the iniquities that we have to separate us, to dull our senses. We want to follow the Word of God and do the things that He has for us to do. Because those iniquities will let you not hear, as we sang this morning, the whispers of God coming to you and saying, You know you're wrong. You know you're living in sin. And you know you need to do something about it, but you just push that back in your mind because you don't want to see that. And you don't want to hear that. You can't hear that word calling because you've heard it so many times before and you've muted it. It doesn't mean anything to you. You pushed it aside so many times. The hair cells have grown worn from hearing God's word preached to you. So they don't work anymore. You resolve to be ignorant by shutting down your own senses. In 16 it says, But blessed are your eyes... For they see, and for years for they hear. Some of us have heard the word of God and we have obeyed it. Some of us have got down to a point where we saw in our lives that this wasn't working and that we needed somebody else. And we called upon the Lord. And I sit and think about the Ethiopian eunuch. And he said, see here is water. What hindereth me from being baptized? That's in Acts 38, 36. Because he had heard the word of Jesus and he saw the water and it had been preached to him about Jesus and he said, well, here it is. What, what hinders me from being baptized? What is it today that hinders you from following Christ? Do you not want to be baptized? Are you afraid as you walk up that front aisle that somebody's going to say, well, there they go? Knowing that every Christian in this house would have joy in their hearts because somebody has been grabbed out of the depths of hell and has decided to live for God. I think about the prodigal son in Luke. This is another one of the parables. And he saw, he realized he was down in the mire and he said, you know, there's better places. My father's servants have got it better than I do. And he saw that, and he realized, and he went home and he confessed to his father what he'd done. His eyes were opened, and he saw it. I think about the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man didn't listen all of his life. He, you know, he may have heard sermons, who knows? What, how many people may have talked to him about God? But he never did hear it. And then he gets to the point where he's in hell, and he's got five brothers, and he said, I want you to go back. Send Lazarus back so that he can tell my five brothers not to come here. And the comment to him was is that they had Moses and the prophets let them hear them. He went without hearing too long. You come to a point where if you don't hear and you don't obey, you're in trouble. There's no coming back. And that's what happened to the rich man in that incident. Psalms 81, 11 and 12 says, But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts, lust, 
and they walked in their own counsel. If we don't grasp on to the word while God is speaking to us, and sometimes he shouts. We talk about a whisper. Sometimes, listen, the Lord shouts to me. But if we don't grab on, he'll let you live in your own lust, heart, the own lust of your heart. And he'll let you go astray. If that's what you want. He didn't leave you. You left him. Because that's what you wanted to do. We need to hear the word. In Proverbs 27 and 20, it says, Hell and destruction are never full. As Christians, we need to be praying for those that are lost. We need to be doing the works that God has for us to do. And for sinners, we need to see the Word for what it is. We need to hear it when God speaks to us. And I want to leave you this morning with one scripture. And that's Genesis 6 and 3. He says, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Don't count on tomorrow I'll do this, or next week I'll do this, or this is busy time, this is the holidays, I've got a lot on my plate. Today is the day of salvation. If the Lord is speaking to you here today and says it's time for you to change, it's time for you to follow me, then you need to hear that and you need to see it for what it is and follow the Lord. As we stand and sing, 639. I can hear my